Another day, another smearing article. This one's called Andrew Yang is Ross Perot for Millennials by Max B. Saki of Jacobin. Andrew Yang likes to present himself as a serious policy thinker, but he's just the latest corporate salesman pitching a quick, a quack remedy to suffering people. There's no law that you have to take a serious interest in politics, so it's no crime to support Andrew Yang's campaign for President of the United States. <laughs> right off the bat, like, think of the condescension. So automatically, if you back his campaign, you don't have a serious interest in politics. Okay. His, ch his chances of winning could be questioned. The formulation Snowball's Chance in Hell comes to mind. These days, the internet has become a hothouse for the germination of policy cults. Enthusiastic online constituencies congeal, congeal around novel ideas. One such idea is the so-called Universal Basic Income, UBI, which has found a new champion in the Yang. Popular enthusiasm for novel policies idea is not altogether new. In the 19th century, Henry George's idea for a single tax on land value spawned popular movements in the United States and elsewhere. In the 1930s, the Townsend Plan for Universal Old Age Pension, not unlike a UBI, helped stir public support, culminating in the Social Security Act of 1935. I've been criticizing the UBI for some years now. Most of the response has been civil, and some has been quite sophisticated. I could note that one of my favorite people in the world, the social movement scholar Francis Fox Pivin, sorts supports a UBI. So I'd like so I'd be the last to suggest such support is always misguided. I'd say there are three different things to unpack. One is a key claim upon which means UBI advocacy rest. That we will need a UBI because automation will extinguish jobs and leave a large swath of the population unable to earn a living. Two is the merit of the UBI and three is the general si salience of the Yang candidacy for which automation and UBI are signature issues. The UBI Paradox. The fear of automation is a, is a familiar one, since it's been cold, circulating for many decades. And lo and behold, putting aside periodic recessions, there have always been more jobs. The long-run trend in U.S. employment is unambiguously positive. We should set, we should get straight, there is no question that automation destroys some jobs. And yes, I have heard of artificial intelligence and self-driving trucks. In other words, so capital becomes more productive, it displaces labor. The case for the UBI is founded on a more specific claim that automation permanently reduces the level of employment or causes it to expand ever more slowly than the labor force, depriving a growing trend of the population of any way to earn a living. The best recent treatment of this age-old can canard is from Dean Baker. Baker's basic point is that if automation permanently reduced the ag aggregate level of employment, we would see progressive job loss as productivity grows. We do not. Actually, we've seen productivity grow while wages have remained stagnant. So that's what we've actually seen. We do see many, we do see changes in the comp composition of employment and not for the better. But the government can usually raise the level of employment with budget and monetary policy if it so chooses. Workers displaced by automation can be provided with new jobs, though they may not find alternatives to their liking, no doubt. These days, some former unionized manufacturing workers are, placed, are pacing the aisles of Home Depot in orange aprons. I don't really know what, that, what the point of that was. The UBI story is that people will be left without any employment options at all, so they require cash support from the government. Yangs proposes a payment of 1000 per person per month. I like how he leaves out that it's for when you turn 18, so he can make it seem like there's an even bigger number of people that are receiving it than there are. Just, you know, little stuff like that and factual stuff left out. Much of the strength of UBI's appeal is the widely shared support for some kind of income guarantee. The wrinkle is that UBI is not the only way to provide such a guarantee and is arguably far from the best. Yang and others try to normalize the UBI by claiming that in the past it was proposed by Martin Luther King Jr. and Milton Freeman, among others. This is simply inaccurate. MLK advocated an income guarantee, not specifically a UBI, and Friedman advocated a negative income tax, a different animal. We already have a raft of income guarantees in the United States for the elderly, disabled, and sur survivors of deceased workers, their Social Security. Veterans have their own pension program. Low-wage workers have the earned income tax credit and the Near Money Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as stu food stamps. The unemployment have unemployment insurance. Those uh, disabled at work have workers' compensation. The indigent elderly have supplemental security income. So just to crack, break that in, in two, uh, 
Social Security for the elderly, disabled, and deceased worker survivors does not guarantee um, assistance when it comes, or rather, uh, income guaranteed as it relates to dental and eye dental care and uh, and eyeglasses. Just saying. Also, if, if veterans were so well assisted, why did 27% of them make up the homeless? <laughs> eh, whatever, but that's the point of these articles. They're all designed to do the same thing of, you know, any any new proposal by any candidate is like such a bad thing. This, is, this part's good here. Yang's support appears to skew young and tech-oriented. I expect that his followers are not familiar with the oldest political cliche in the book the outsider untainted by politics who goes to washington shakes things up some might think of the president in that way but the fact is he sprang from the vile maw of the republican party and has enjoyed its unwavering support the children's crusade aspect of yang's campaign is underlined by its website which features a hundred or more proposals many of which are well motivated if vague it's ironic that someone whose slogan is math declines to provide any sort of overall budget with you know actual numbers there's a little point in pressing any campaign with the how to pay for question, but if you are going to propose everything plus the moon, there is some obligation to outline the bro the broad perimeters quantitatively. Yang has a bit about Medicare for All with no details, but some blather about holistic treatment. The effect is to give the appearance of a policy wonk to people who don't know much about policy. I mean, like, what what makes you an expert? One of this, that's what I'm saying. This article is really condescending. Oh, uh, you, people who support Yang's campaign uh, don't know much about, have, don't follow politics seriously. Oh, uh, his website is set up to where if you go over there, it's supposed to trick you into thinking you know about policy. <laughs> One of the sketchier angles regarding pay for is the idea that UBI would replace existing programs. In the past, the proposal has drawn some libertarian support on the strength of this hope. Yang proposes that existing programs beneficiaries will have a choice from UBI and whatever benefit for which they are otherwise eligible. Here again, the universal aspect of the program is undercut. I get Social Security and you bums get UBI. It's impress the, Im the impression persists of a campaign conceived for purposes other than actually winning. Marianne Williamson comes to mind in this vein as well. We will have a better gauge of Yang's intentions once he is excluded from the debates and eventually when the nominee is chosen. Insofar as his agitation narrows down to the UBI focus, its prospects are dim. We have bigger fish to fry. Anti-fascism, Medicare for all, the fight for 15 Green New Deal. The internet magnifies flashes in the pan, but the real struggle for democratic socialism is in the streets. So he's basically, yeah, he's saying that Yang and his campaign is a, a flash in the pan that the internet has magnified and all of these tech-oriented millennials have decided to, to push up. <sighs> like I said, these people write articles like this and then they get surprised when there's this uh, like overwhelming push to support that candidate by the people who back them. You know, you if someone were to write an article about Joe brain-rotting Biden or Pete Buttigieg, they would just tell you why the person inspires and they wouldn't give you a policy related thing. They would just tell you, uh, support this person because they're electable or, uh, you know, some other random factoid. But I, I do like that. He has to admit that Yang is, um, is given, you know, he's different proposals. I just hate that. You know, there's this thing of, oh, the, the proposals are vague and they're so vague. I have to write a series of paragraphs about it. That's how vague they are. <laughs> it's like, who are you kidding? Guys, I you you know, I I don't have much experience with Jacob in this website, so it could be a better place than this article is making itself seem. But recurringly, I have sat on on these, read these different articles because I'm trying to show some of the points that are made against these candidates, and particularly with Yang. You have a guy who is literally saying. He, he there's no way he's going to win. Uh, we're going to find out what the real purpose of this campaign was when he loses. Cause so he has a crystal ball and it, it goes back to that thing of how these people, they just run their mouths and run it and run. It. It's like Yang has been moving up in the polls. He's made all of the debates. So what, what's with these predictions? Like, you know, do I need, I remind people that Warren of uh, at the start of the year when she first got in the race was, in a pretty similar predicament and we're still months removed from when we actually start seeing some primaries take place.
But like I said, these people will continue to smear Yang, and it's up to the rest of us to actually try to change this.